What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto49er bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. So today I want to talk about Tendiment. What is Tendiment? But before I do, I just want to remind you guys, I do give away $5 in Litecoin or $10 on CryptoBridge. All you have to do is answer a trivia question that posts up every Wednesday. And this time you have to put your answer on my Instagram post on Wednesday's video. Yes, I know I haven't been putting the previews on Instagram as often as I should be. I'll definitely be posting on Wednesday, so make sure that you see the Wednesday's Instagram post. Well, make sure you follow me on Instagram first of all, favorite my posts, and reply on Wednesday's post with your answer for a chance to win the $5 in Litecoin or $10 on CryptoBridge. Alright, on to today's topic. Today's a long topic in a sense because Tendiment is not exactly an easy topic to cover. I'll try my best anyway. So what is Tendiment? Tendiment is a protocol for building blockchains that are provably Byzantine fault tolerant. So what is Byzantine fault tolerant? The best definition I can find is on Wikipedia. Byzantine fault tolerance is the, dependent, the dependability of a fault tolerant computer system, particularly distributed computing, computing systems where components may fail and there is imperfect information on whether a component is failed. I know a lot of you might have heard of Byzantine fault tolerance in regards to Bitcoin and Bitcoin has basically done it without academia per se because Byzantine fault tolerance is something that has been talked about for a long time and actually one way to instead of thinking about Bitcoin it's, it's, it's applied in academics and other fields actually in airplanes for example in this picture of this airplane right here you can see that they have a flight control computer and then it has in contact with all these other sensors and components on the airplane basically on a Byzantine fault tolerant system on an airplane how many of these components on an airplane can fail before the airplane crashes that's essentially the idea of Byzantine fault tolerance in academia there's been a lot of white papers that have written up this was the most relevant one this is one where they call they created a practical Byzantine fault tolerance algorithm back in 1999 and it's able to tolerate problems with up to one-third of the components on the airplane or one-third of the computers in the distributed computing system to fail before the entire system has issues. So that is BFT or Byzantine Fault Tolerance. So Tendiment allows you to build other blockchains and, then, and in the introduction post they have a very detailed description of how it works and how it compares to other blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So for the most part, they say that for Bitcoin and Ethereum, they both rely on proof of work. So the one main issue that people have with proof of work is the wasted energy to ensure that there is consensus among different components in the network. With Tendiment, it is a proof of stake algorithm. So they would not need to have the proof of work involved to get the consensus needed. And they have a lot of information they need to, besides how it compares to Bitcoin and Ethereum, they also have something called the application blockchain interface which basically lets you write applications on Tendiment using any programming language. So that's really interesting. And that's how they were able to come up with something like Ethermint, which I mentioned in the past, which is basically a replication of the whole of the of Ethereum on the Tendiment protocol. And so the team behind Tendiment built out something called Cosmos. So what is Cosmos? Cosmos, as you can see on their website here, it looks pretty cool actually. So it's an uh, internet of blockchains. Cosmos is a decentralized network of independent parallel blockchains, each powered by Tendiment. So the idea is, like I mentioned before, with Ethermint being one of the many blockchains that's replicating Ethereum on the Tendiment platform. So what it is, they can basically replicate not just Ethereum, they can replicate Bitcoin, they can replicate Zcash. There's several different, many different cryptocurrency blockchains they can replicate on their platform so then that way they can switch all these blockchains from proof of work to proof of stake and save a ton of energy and that's essentially a point with cosmos it would then be a hub on top of these all these other blockchain and they'll be able to communicate with each other so that's what cosmos is and i'm just going to explain the four elements in cosmos so they have the atoms is what they actually sold on a fundraiser as they call it not ico but they sold atoms which is a licenses for holders to stake and vote. So you can stake and vote with atoms and be able to determine how the, how the Cosmo network will be modified going forward. And the next level up is the validators. Obviously, these are the people that are committing new blocks. 
pretty much essentially the same as miners on Bitcoin. So, and then after that, you have zones. Zones are what Ethermin is, is really a zone. So you have one blockchain that sits on top of Tendermint, and they could have a Bitcoin blockchain that sits on Tendermint, and then you will have another zone, and so on and so forth. And all these zones, again, they all can talk to each other through the hubs. So a hub is what Cosmo is. So Cosmos can let all these other blockchains talk to each other and be able to trade uh, with each other and be able to work with each other. So that's going to be very interesting with Cosmos. So here are some of the positives with Cosmos. Because it's based on Tendermint, which is, as they say, super fast. It, has ten, it can process 10,000 transactions per second with one second finality. Finality is one of those concepts that's hard to explain, but essentially what it is is once a block is finalized, you can't go back and rewrite it. Whereas with Bitcoin, there is no finality per se, because if you have the computing power to do a 51% attack on Bitcoin, you can roll back up to whenever you started having the 51% power to rewrite any of those blockchains, because you can just then basically roll back the blockchain, essentially, and then start from that point. And that's the reason why on Bitcoin, they say that you have to wait for six blocks before you want to confirm that transactions finalized, because that's what they consider finality on Bitcoin as six blocks of confirmation. So with Cosmos, it's only one second. So I'm assuming it's uh, one block or less, pretty much. And the other thing is you can simulate many blockchains on this. So again, um, you can have Ethereum, Bitcoin, so many other ones that you could be putting on in Cosmos and be working with all these other blockchains within Cosmos. And obviously the third thing is that it's energy efficient compared to proof of work, which basically a lot of the top 10 cryptocurrency besides Ripple right now I would say is uh, proof of work based. So you obviously have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero, all these top 10 currencies are proof of work. Here's some negatives for Cosmos. So one third validators goes rogue is less than 51% needed for attack on Bitcoin. So that is one of those things where, theoretically, if you have one third of the validators acting against the system, you can they can actually cause major issues. So that sounds to me, it's like it's less than 51%, obviously it's 33% compared to 51%. I've been trying to find every word I can find in terms of Bitcoin getting attacked with only 33% miners. Bitcoin has never been attacked so far with the 51% attack. But here's the point. Cosmos, based on the BFT algorithms that they use, they have said that yes, as long as less than one third, 33% of validator goes rogue, they will be fine. But once above that, then all hell breaks loose, basically. Whereas Bitcoin, we really don't know. We just know for a fact that there is a 51% attack that can be done on Bitcoin. No one has done that yet. But below that, there's no threshold to say, oh, you know, 33%, you know, it's it's that level where you can guarantee all hell breaks loose on Bitcoin. So that's why I would say that Cosmos requires less validators to go rogue, essentially, than the miners on Bitcoin. So the thing is, um, it's been in development for almost a year, Cosmos. It's only 74% complete. So if you uh, look at this roadmap they have here. So as of today, it's March 12th. They only have 74% complete. They have various components that they are building on. Even Tendermint Core is not complete yet. That is one of the key things. It's still three reversions away from being complete. So, and then the hub itself is like, there's three more test nets before it actually goes live. So it's quite a bit away, I have to say. And finally, I have to say, is there a lack of interest on Cosmos? Because honestly, this is like, if I wasn't digging into Tendermint, I wouldn't have learned about Cosmos in the first place. And it's just like, it seems like a lack of interest because if you look on the Telegram channel, they only have 4,000 members on there, well, 4,170. Compared to, from what I could call from other numbers like Electronium or these other much bigger, I mean, obviously they ICO'd, but uh, you know, those Telegram communities have like 20,000 and, and change just five times as much as other than Cosmos. I really wonder if there's really that much interest in Cosmos. So the bottom line is this, for Tendermint, Tendermint has been in development since 2014. While several projects will be using it, it is still not complete as of March 2018. And as I mentioned in my previous video, Data, Data is one that is using Ethermint, which is Ethereum built on top of Tendermint. They will be using Tendermint, as they said. And the other one is Seek, which I'm thinking I'm making a video about. They also use Tendermint, so it's going to be interesting how these two blockchains will be using Tendermint, given the fact that Tendermint is not really technically complete yet. So we have to see. Cosmos fund rated 
not ICO. Hopefully the SEC agrees. I don't know. I mean, they fundraised 17 million in just eight minutes, but will probably be released. But Cosmos will probably be released after EOS, which ICO two months later. Cosmos fundraised in April of 2017. I mean, they completed the fundraising in eight minutes, which is great compared to EOS, which is still fundraising or I, which is still uh, in the ICO phase today because this ICO phase is one year. So we'll see when EOS gets released. I mean, hopefully it gets released pretty much soon after June 1st, we don't know. But the point being, people that invested into Cosmos through the fundraiser couldn't do anything with the token for almost a year right now. So we'll see how what happens, right? But it'll be interesting to see who will be more popular in 2018 or if we are still just talking about Ethereum in 2018. Anyway guys, that's my video for today. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.